Well, we've been talking about our interview with Alan Dershowitz. Something I think is interesting is in his book, War Against the Jews, which we were talking about, he makes the point that this particular conflict that's happened has created, it's by bringing to light some of the hidden um, feelings that people have in America, so surprising anti-Semitism and surprising support, that it has blended lines or blurred lines of um, advocacy and enemies that weren't there before. So people who previously would have found themselves political opponents are now political allies and vice versa. He makes that point. And that it has caused some interesting disruptions for the 2024 election. And we've already seen that, like in the, the primaries, especially in March primaries, we saw a lot of, um, on the Democrat side, uh, undecided or un, you know, uncommitted uh, votes of people who actually were really disappointed, Democrats who were really disappointed that the Biden administration hasn't been more supportive of Hamas and Palestinians. And so they're against Biden. They're, they're just not going to vote for Biden. And then similarly, people who identify themselves as Democrats being really upset that um, some of the left has taken such a strong pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas position that they find themselves distancing from the Democrat Party and Democrat leadership and are reluctant to vote for the Democrat administration and are either going to vote Republican or unsure or just not going to vote, which could really affect voter turnout. I think that this, so I want to chat with you about it and get your, your take, but I think that this presents a unique opportunity. So this isn't something that is kind of contrived by the media or a force by nonprofit groups in America. It sort of popped up, you know, from a, a provoked conflict from Hamas last October. Um, and America's responding. So uh, a little bit like Arab Spring that happened, you know, many years ago that our intelligence community didn't anticipate. I think this is something America, America didn't anticipate. The American indoctrination machine, if you will, didn't anticipate. That suddenly has made strange bedfellows, political bedfellows across the country. And left us in a place that um, provides opportunity for unity. Just like we were talking about in our last episode where... There's been dialogue and discussion and, and people looking at each other differently going, I, I didn't expect to find myself on, in the same camp as you, but this is actually a really big issue. This issue of what happens between Israel and Palestine, actually Israel and Iran, Israel and the entire Middle East, it affects an entire global stability. It affects our relationship with the Middle East, but it affects entire global stability. And what you think about this conflict and about these people groups um, has tremendous consequences. You know, when you see these pro-Palestinian supporters in New York and such holding up Nazi flags, it affects, like, we're talking about how you think about things, not just what you think. Um, I think most people, we have to say most because it isn't all, most people want peace in the Middle East and want this conflict to stop. We, we want um, innocent people to stop dying. We want there to be peace. However, we can't support people holding up and, and espousing Nazi ideology, right? So I like that this is an opportunity for there to be unity between people groups that didn't used to find unity and commonality. What yeah. are your, what's well, your take? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you say that it's made strange bedfellows because it really shouldn't have. I mean, we have, That's a great point. We have for so many decades had a consistent pro-Israel... Wait, pro please define we, because the people listening might not When know. I say we, I say we as a country. I see. Um, have had a, a, a pro, generally pro-Israel stance. Now, we, Democrats and Republicans have had differences of opinion on, on and in, in terms of their administrations, presidential administrations, on how to achieve a two-state solution and those kinds of things. But uh, America has been, um, as a matter of policy, um, at the, the highest level of the government, a staunchly no, pro-Israel, and so to see this that 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 kind of become up, upended, even though the pre, you know our current president Biden has 
has spoken from the bully pulpit and said, you know, we support Israel. We, there's also been a lot of underhanded things, you know, right. on, on the other hand that, that go where he, he hasn't. So um, it's a very strange irony to me that in 2001, we had uh, 9-11, mm -hmm. right? And it was a bunch of terrorists who flew a plane into a building, killed... Well, yeah, a couple buildings. Yeah. Uh, killed hundreds of Americans, right? Thousands. Mm-hmm. And our response was... A we war went, on terror. A war on terror. Mm -hmm. We went into Iraq. We invaded a country. We occupied a country, right? And, I mean, we went all out. Yeah, now for years. Now, we are in a position where we have people in government, our leaders speaking in support of a terrorist organization. That's correct. And defending a terrorist... And, in, in their terrorist And house. criticizing Israel for doing very much the same thing that we did when we invaded Iraq, right? And so, uh, for me, it's just, it's the cognitive dissonance between saying we are, you know, having this strong war on terror and then on the other hand, having leaders now saying, uh, we, we, are, we are standing with this terrorist organization because, and, and against Israel um, in this conflict, is just mind-boggling to me. It's, right. it's mind-blowing. Even as the heads of the terrorist organization are saying, we do not want a ceasefire. And that's why, and to your point, that's why I think you're, we're seeing a coalescing of people who, on lots of other issues, might be on like polar opposites mm -hmm. when they see that kind of double-mindedness when they see that kind of hypocrisy when that's they're like you know no no we're not we're not with you on that one we're united on this particular piece and it's an important thing to be united on let's 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 that's you know right. let's be very clear it's important to be united on our support for israel and supporting israel does not mean being against Palestinians, which is often also how it's <laughs> how it's framed. Um, it's being against the organization, the government leadership that's that's leading them, Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. But you're not against Palestinians by supporting Israel. Israel does a lot um, to support and, and help uh, Palestinians. There 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 are, there are Arabs in in, um, in Israeli Parliament too. I mean, it's it's not a um, um, it's not a situation where it's this again another zero sum you know issue where you have to like saying one thing means that you're against the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think America has supported and has tried to broker that two state solution multiple times. I think there's been several times it's been offered that Israel's offered it even in this century, and Palestinian leadership has rejected it. And you know even this song that they sing or the the motto they have, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Um, free of what? And the answer is free of Israel. And so that's why they, they've been rejecting this two-state solution, because the, they don't want Israel between the sea and the Jordan River, which means getting rid of the state of Israel. And I think on our end, it's so critical that we as Americans continue to speak out I mean, uh, in addition to what's happening there but to speak out very strongly against what we're seeing in terms of this rise of anti-semitism yes because you know you and i know for example are there there's not a lot at least in terms of what our children have been taught school we had to teach them about world war ii about they world never war were II, taught Hitler, about the holocaust, the holocaust all that stuff mm -hmm. and so you know it's important that we remind this you know the the, the generations that are following us of what can happen and not to think that we're somehow morally superior and so much yeah, better point. than these others. Like, we are all human. We are all capable of the greatest um, heroisms and amazing things, but we're also capable of the most horrible depravity. Right. And we need to remember the lessons of history and remind ourselves of them. And when we see things like the anti-Semitism that we're seeing, you know, bubble up, not to be silent and to really stand strongly against it and speak loudly uh, against it, because we don't we don't we don't want to go down that dark and dangerous road. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
I think that that's good. So what do you think this means for the 2024 election? I think uh, I think this could really have a big effect on Democrat turnout. Uh, I think that this might be part of why we're seeing a surge in Republican favoritism for President Trump. I think that could be contributing to it. I think it, it could have a surprising impact on what happens in 2024. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the biggest, right now, the biggest issue is immigration. I think that's going to have the biggest impact. But I do think uh, this issue with what's happening in Israel and uh the anti-Semitism we're seeing, and, and perhaps Dershowitz tied it also with DEI, like it's all of a piece, this kind of racist, uh, tribalism ideology that's, sure. um, people don't like it, and they've seen the damage that it's done in just a few years, so I, I do think it's going to play a role in the election, um, I do think that, that uh, foreign policy is an important issue, uh, I just think that Domestic really right now, that's that's probably gonna be Top the, of big, people's you know, minds. the bigger thing.